Axiom, Wikipedia article audio. An axiom or postulate is a statement that is taken to be true, to serve as a premise or starting point for further reasoning and arguments. The word comes from the Greek axma that which is thought worthy or fit or that which commends itself as evident. The term has subtle differences in definition when used in the context of different fields of study. As defined in classic philosophy, an axiom is a statement that is so evident or well established, that it is accepted without controversy or question. As used in modern logic, an axiom is simply a premise or starting point for reasoning. Etymology Historical Development As used in mathematics, the term axiom is used in two related but distinguishable senses, logical axioms and non-logical axioms. Logical axioms are usually statements that are taken to be true within the system of logic they define implies a often shown in symbolic form, while non-logical axioms are actually substantive assertions about the elements of the domain of a specific mathematical theory. When used in the latter sense, axiom, postulate, and assumption may be used interchangeably. In general, a non-logical axiom is not a self-evident truth but rather a formal logical expression used in deduction to build a mathematical theory. To axiomatize a system of knowledge is to show that its claims can be derived from a small, well-understood set of sentences. There are typically multiple ways to axiomatize a given mathematical domain. In both senses, an axiom is any mathematical statement that serves as a starting point from which other statements are logically derived. Whether it is meaningful for an axiom, or any mathematical statement, to be true is an open question in the philosophy of mathematics. The word axiom comes from the Greek word xiomega mu alpha, a verbal noun from the verb xi iota epsilon iota nu, meaning to deem worthy but also to require, which in turn comes from Xiota Omicron, meaning being in balance, and hence having value, worthy, proper. Among the ancient Greek philosophers an axiom was a claim which could be seen to be true without any need for proof. The root meaning of the word postulate is to demand, for instance, Euclid demands that one agree that some things can be done, e.g. any two points can be joined by a straight line, etc. Ancient geometers maintained some distinction between axioms and postulates. While commenting on Euclid's books, Proclus remarks that, Geminus held that this postulate should not be classed as a postulate but as an axiom, since it does not, like the first three postulates, assert the possibility of some construction but expresses an essential property. Boethius translated postulate as petitio and called the axioms notions communes but in later manuscripts this usage was not always strictly kept. Early Greeks The logico-deductive method whereby conclusions follow from premises through the application of sound arguments, was developed by the ancient Greeks, and has become the core principle of modern mathematics. Tautologies excluded, nothing can be deduced if nothing is assumed. Axioms and postulates are the basic assumptions underlying a given body of deductive knowledge. They are accepted without demonstration. All other assertions must be proven with the aid of these basic assumptions. However, the interpretation of mathematical knowledge has changed from ancient times to the modern, and consequently the terms axiom and postulate hold a slightly different meaning for the present-day mathematician, than they did for Aristotle and Euclid. The ancient Greeks considered geometry as just one of several sciences, and held the theorems of geometry on par with scientific facts. As such, 
they developed and used the logico-deductive method as a means of avoiding error, and for structuring and communicating knowledge. Aristotle's posterior analytics is a definitive exposition of the classical view. Modern Development An axiom, in classical terminology, referred to a self-evident assumption common to many branches of science. A good example would be the assertion that when an equal amount is taken from equals, an equal amount results. At the foundation of the various sciences lay certain additional hypotheses which were accepted without proof. Such a hypothesis was termed a postulate. While the axioms were common to many sciences, the postulates of each particular science were different. Their validity had to be established by means of real-world experience. Indeed, Aristotle warns that the content of a science cannot be successfully communicated, if the learner is in doubt about the truth of the postulates. Other Sciences The classical approach is well illustrated by Euclid's Elements, where a list of postulates is given, followed by a list of common notions. Mathematical Logic a lesson learned by mathematics in the last 150 years is that it is useful to strip the meaning away from the mathematical assertions and definitions. One must concede the need for primitive notions, or undefined terms or concepts, in any study. Such abstraction or formalization makes mathematical knowledge more general, capable of multiple different meanings and therefore useful in multiple contexts. Alessandro Padua, Mario Pieri, and Giuseppe Piano were pioneers in this movement. Logical Axioms Structuralist mathematics goes further, and develops theories and axioms without any particular application in mind. The distinction between an axiom and a postulate disappears. The postulates of Euclid are profitably motivated by saying that they lead to a great wealth of geometric facts. The truth of these complicated facts rests on the acceptance of the basic hypotheses. However, by throwing out Euclid's fifth postulate we get theories that have meaning in wider contexts, hyperbolic geometry for example. We must simply be prepared to use labels like line and parallel with greater flexibility. The development of hyperbolic geometry taught mathematicians that postulates should be regarded as purely formal statements, and not as facts based on experience. When mathematicians employ the field axioms, the intentions are even more abstract. The propositions of field theory do not concern any one particular application, the mathematician now works in complete abstraction. There are many examples of fields, field theory gives correct knowledge about them all. Examples It is not correct to say that the axioms of field theory are propositions that are regarded as true without proof. Rather, the field axioms are a set of constraints. If any given system of addition and multiplication satisfies these constraints, then one is in a position to instantly know a great deal of extra information about this system. Modern mathematics formalizes its foundations to such an extent that mathematical theories can be regarded as mathematical objects and mathematics itself can be regarded as a branch of logic. Friedrich, Russell, Poincaré, Hilbert, and Gödel are some of the key figures in this development. In the modern understanding, a set of axioms is any collection of formally stated assertions from which other formally stated assertions follow by the application of certain well-defined rules. In this view, logic becomes just another formal system. A set of axioms should be consistent, it should be impossible to derive a contradiction from the axiom. A set of axioms should also be non-redundant, 
an assertion that can be deduced from other axioms need not be regarded as an axiom. It was the early hope of modern logicians that various branches of mathematics, perhaps all of mathematics, could be derived from a consistent collection of basic axioms. An early success of the formalist program was Hilbert's formalization of Euclidean geometry, and the related demonstration of the consistency of those axioms. In a wider context, there was an attempt to base all of mathematics on Cantor's set theory. Here the emergence of Russell's paradox, and similar antinomies of naive set theory raised the possibility that any such system could turn out to be inconsistent. Propositional Logic The formalist project suffered a decisive setback, when in 1931 Godel showed that it is possible, for any sufficiently large set of axioms to construct a statement whose truth is independent of that set of axioms. As a corollary, Gödel proved that the consistency of a theory like Peano arithmetic is an unprovable assertion within the scope of that theory. First-order logic It is reasonable to believe in the consistency of Peano arithmetic because it is satisfied by the system of natural numbers, an infinite but intuitively accessible formal system. However, at present, there is no known way of demonstrating the consistency of the modern zermelo frankel axioms for set theory. Furthermore, using techniques of forcing one can show that the continuum hypothesis is independent of the zermelo frankel axioms. Thus, even this very general set of axioms cannot be regarded as the definitive foundation for mathematics. Axioms play a key role not only in mathematics, but also in other sciences, notably in theoretical physics. In particular, the monumental work of Isaac Newton is essentially based on Euclid's axioms, augmented by a postulate on the non-relation of space-time and the physics taking place in it at any moment. In 1905, Newton's axioms were replaced by those of Albert Einstein's special relativity, and later on by those of general relativity. Another paper of Albert Einstein and co-workers, almost immediately contradicted by Niels Bohr, concerned the interpretation of quantum mechanics. This was in 1935. According to Bohr, this new theory should be probabilistic whereas according to Einstein it should be deterministic. Notably, the underlying quantum mechanical theory, i.e. the set of theorems derived by it, seemed to be identical. Einstein even assumed that it would be sufficient to add to quantum mechanics hidden variables to enforce determinism. However, 30 years later, in 1964, John Bell found a theorem, involving complicated optical correlations, which yielded measurably different results using Einstein's axioms compared to using Bohr's axioms. And it took roughly another 20 years until an experiment of a lane aspect got results in favor of Bohr's axioms, not Einstein's. Non-logical axioms Examples 2 Arithmetic Euclidean geometry As a consequence, it is not necessary to explicitly cite Einstein's axioms, the more so since they concern subtle points on the reality and locality of experiments. Regardless, the role of axioms in mathematics and in the above-mentioned sciences is different. In mathematics one neither proves nor disproves an axiom for a set of theorems, the point is simply that in the conceptual realm identified by the axioms, the theorems logically follow. In contrast, in physics a comparison with experiments always makes sense, since a falsified physical theory needs modification. In the field of mathematical logic, a clear distinction is made between two notions of axioms, 
logical and non-logical. These are certain formulas in a formal language that are universally valid, that is, formulas that are satisfied by every assignment of values. Usually one takes as logical axioms at least some minimal set of tautologies that is sufficient for proving all tautologies in the language, in the case of predicate logic more logical axioms than that are required, in order to prove logical truths that are not tautologies in the strict sense. In propositional logic it is common to take as logical axioms all formulae of the following forms, where, chi, and, psi, can be any formulae of the language and where the included primitive connectives are only, for negation of the immediately following proposition and, for implication from antecedent to consequent propositions. Each of these patterns is an axiom schema, a rule for generating an infinite number of axioms. For example, if, a, b, and, c, are propositional variables, then, a, b, a, and, a, b, c, a, b, are both instances of axiom schema 1, and hence are axioms. It can be shown that with only these three axiom schemata and modus ponens, one can prove all tautologies of the propositional calculus. It can also be shown that no pair of these schemata is sufficient for proving all tautologies with modus ponens. Other axiom schemas involving the same or different sets of primitive connectives can be alternatively constructed. Real Analysis These axiom schemata are also used in the predicate calculus but additional logical axioms are needed to include a quantifier in the calculus. Axiom of equality Let L be a first-order language. For each variable, x, the formula x equals x. Role in mathematical logic Deductive systems and completeness Further discussion Is universally valid This means that, for any variable symbol, x, the formula, x, equals, x, can be regarded as an axiom. Also, in this example, for this not to fall into vagueness and a never-ending series of primitive notions, either a precise notion of what we mean by, x, equals, x, has to be well established first, or a purely formal and syntactical usage of the symbol, equals, has to be enforced, only regarding it as a string and only a string of symbols, and mathematical logic does indeed do that. Another, more interesting example axiom scheme, is that which provides us with what is known as universal instantiation. Axiom Scheme for Universal Instantiation Given a formula, in a first-order language, L, a variable, X, and a term, T, that is substitutable for, X, in, the formula, X, T, X, is universally valid, where the symbol, T, X, stands for the formula, with the term, t, substituted for, x. In informal terms, this example allows us to state that, if we know that a certain property p, holds for every, x, and that, t, stands for a particular object in our structure, then we should be able to claim p, t. Again, we are claiming that the formula, x, t, x, is valid, that is, we must be able to give a proof of this fact, or more properly speaking, a meta-proof. Actually, these examples are meta-theorems of our theory of mathematical logic since we are dealing with the very concept of proof itself. 
Aside from this, we can also have existential generalization. Axiom scheme for existential generalization. Given a formula, in a first order language, L, a variable, X, and a term, T, that is substitutable for, X, in, the formula. T, X, X, backslash to backslash exists X backslash comma backslash phi. Is universally valid. Non-logical axioms are formulas that play the role of theory-specific assumptions. Reasoning about two different structures, for example the natural numbers and the integers, may involve the same logical axioms, the non-logical axioms aim to capture what is special about a particular structure. Thus non-logical axioms, unlike logical axioms, are not tautologies. Another name for a non-logical axiom is postulate. Almost every modern mathematical theory starts from a given set of non-logical axioms, and it was thought that in principle every theory could be axiomatized in this way and formalized down to the bare language of logical formulas. Non-logical axioms are often simply referred to as axioms in mathematical discourse. This does not mean that it is claimed that they are true in some absolute sense. For example, in some groups, the group operation is commutative, and this can be asserted with the introduction of an additional axiom, but without this axiom we can do quite well developing group theory, and we can even take its negation as an axiom for the study of non-commutative groups. Thus, an axiom is an elementary basis for a formal logic system that together with the rules of inference define a deductive system. This section gives examples of mathematical theories that are developed entirely from a set of non-logical axioms. A rigorous treatment of any of these topics begins with a specification of these axioms. Basic Theories such as arithmetic, real analysis, and complex analysis are often introduced non-axiomatically, but implicitly or explicitly there is generally an assumption that the axioms being used are the axioms of Zermelo-Frankel set theory with choice, abbreviated ZFC, or some very similar system of axiomatic set theory like von neumann bernays godel set theory, a conservative extension of ZFC. Sometimes slightly stronger theories such as Morse-Kelly set theory or set theory with a strongly inaccessible cardinal allowing the use of a Groth and Dieck universe are used, but in fact most mathematicians can actually prove all they need in systems weaker than ZFC, such as second-order arithmetic. The study of topology in mathematics extends all over through point set topology, algebraic topology, differential topology, and all the related paraphernalia, such as homology theory, homotopy theory. The development of abstract algebra brought with itself group theory, rings, fields, and Galois theory. This list could be expanded to include most fields of mathematics, including measure theory, ergodic theory, probability, representation theory, and differential geometry. The Peano axioms are the most widely used axiomatization of first-order arithmetic. They are a set of axioms strong enough to prove many important facts about number theory and they allowed Godel to establish his famous second incompleteness theorem. We have a language, L, N, T, equals, 0 S, equals backslash, where, 0, is a constant symbol and S, is a unary function and the following axioms. The standard structure is, n, equals, n, 0 s, equals backslash lang li backslash math 0 s backslash wrangle, where, n, is the set of natural numbers s, is the successor function and, 0, is naturally interpreted as the number 0. 
Probably the oldest, and most famous, list of axioms are the 4 plus 1 Euclid's postulates of plane geometry. The axioms are referred to as 4 plus 1 because for nearly two millennia the fifth postulate was suspected of being derivable from the first four. Ultimately, the fifth postulate was found to be independent of the first four. Indeed, one can assume that exactly one parallel through a point outside a line exists, or that infinitely many exist. This choice gives us two alternative forms of geometry in which the interior angles of a triangle add up to exactly 180 degrees or less, respectively, and are known as Euclidean and hyperbolic geometries. If one also removes the second postulate then elliptic geometry arises, where there is no parallel through a point outside a line, and in which the interior angles of a triangle add up to more than 180 degrees. The objectives of study are within the domain of real numbers. The real numbers are uniquely picked out by the properties of a datakint complete ordered field, meaning that any non-empty set of real numbers with an upper bound has a least upper bound. However, expressing these properties as axioms requires use of second-order logic. The lowenheim skolem theorems tell us that if we restrict ourselves to first-order logic, any axiom system for the reals admits other models, including both models that are smaller than the reals and models that are larger. Some of the latter are studied in non-standard analysis. A deductive system consists of a set, lambda, of logical axioms, a set, sigma, of non-logical axioms, and a set, gamma, of rules of inference. A desirable property of a deductive system is that it be complete. A system is said to be complete if, for all formulas, if, sigma, then, sigma, backslash sigma backslash models backslash phi backslash sigma backslash v dash backslash phi. That is, for any statement that is a logical consequence of, sigma, there actually exists a deduction of the statement from, sigma. This is sometimes expressed as everything that is true is provable but it must be understood that true here means made true by the set of axioms, and not, for example, true in the intended interpretation. Godel's completeness theorem establishes the completeness of a certain commonly used type of deductive system. Note that completeness has a different meaning here than it does in the context of Godel's first incompleteness theorem, which states that no recursive, consistent set of non-logical axioms, sigma, of the theory of arithmetic is complete, in the sense that there will always exist an arithmetic statement, such that neither, nor, can be proved from the given set of axioms. There is thus, on the one hand, the notion of completeness of a deductive system and on the other hand that of completeness of a set of non-logical axioms. The completeness theorem and the incompleteness theorem, despite their names, do not contradict one another. Early mathematicians regarded axiomatic geometry as a model of physical space, and obviously there could only be one such model. The idea that alternative mathematical systems might exist was very troubling to mathematicians of the 19th century and the developers of systems such as Boolean algebra made elaborate efforts to derive them from traditional arithmetic. Galois showed just before his untimely death that these efforts were largely wasted. Ultimately, the abstract parallels between algebraic systems were seen to be more important than the details and modern algebra was born. In the modern view axioms may be any set of formulas, as long as they are not known to be inconsistent. <laughs>